Editing long podcasts like this or webinars for social is time consuming. Simplified AI Clips uses AI to turn your lengthy videos into short, viral clips. Create shareable content from your recordings in a few minutes. Built for small businesses and marketers looking to save time and boost engagement, visit simplified.com and use Annika30 to save 30% today. Welcome to Your Brand Amplified, the podcast where we interview marketers, publicists, and brands to learn their stories, what makes them tick, and tips and tricks that make a difference. I'm very excited to be back for another week of Your Brand Amplified with Sarah St. John, the frugalpreneur. Welcome to the show. (laughs) Well, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Now, I don't know your whole story, but I'd love for you to share as much as you want. Um, I can say that your podcast um, really resonates with me, the whole idea of the frugalpreneur, because most of my entrepreneurial journeys have been bootstrapped Mm. and started with zero or, you know, me in like some situation where I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this, this, and then put the money into this so that I can actually build up my own business. Oh, uh uh-huh. Yeah. So I would say, well, I've always kind of had an entrepreneurial mindset, I guess. Uh, Like when I was a kid, I would take things that I would get for free, like, you know, pencils and candy and sell them to friends. But (laughs) I didn't really realize that it wasn't until like 2008 that I actually realized that I had an entrepreneurial mindset going all the way back then. Um, I had actually had six different jobs that year, mm. not at the same time, but throughout the course <laughs> of the year and realized, uh, I think I want to work for myself. And so the first thing I started was a photography business, but I realized that just the expense to maintain mm. and upkeep like equipment and lighting and software and all that stuff. Plus I was doing weddings and portraits cause that's where the money is when you're first starting out. But I like taking photos of like animals, architecture, and landscapes, not people. (laughs) So then I decided to try to do something online and, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I tried a bunch of different things like drop shipping, affiliate marketing, Mm. blogging, on-demand t-shirt printing, all this different stuff. And it was kind of in that process that I discovered like all these free or really affordable tools, resources, and software that people could run an online business on a budget. And so I got the idea to write a book called Frugalpreneur about the different online business models and how to run them on a budget. And then (laughs) while I was writing that book, I got the idea to launch the podcast also called Frugalpreneur. And it was just going to be like 10 episodes to help kind of promote the (laughs) book but I was getting more leverage and traction with the podcast than the book. And so (laughs) I kept, kept the podcast going. I've been doing it for like three years now. Uh, I think about 150 or so episodes and I just love the networking and connections and everything. And so, um, but yeah, so it took over a decade of trying a bunch of different things before I figured out that podcasting was my thing. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and I think that is the entrepreneurial journey is if you have that spirit, you're going to do, I've, I've had very disparate businesses, right? Um, and that's what you do. You kind of go, okay, wait, maybe this, maybe that. And I, once on one hand, somebody could call it shiny object mm-hmm. syndrome, but on the other hand, I'm like, no, that's not what it is. Because if you have this in your blood, you're going to keep trying and trying and trying until you find that thing that really like sets you on fire and that resonates mm-hmm. and that you can turn into a great business for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think sometimes I call it shiny object syndrome, but it might be more like, I mean, if you find something that you're good at and successful and and then you start looking around at other stuff, that would definitely, I would think be shiny (laughs) object syndrome. But whereas my situation was more like just trying different things that I had heard of, but the issue was I wasn't passionate about it. It was Mm -hmm. more uh, I would say transactional or trying to make money, um, like drop shipping, um, like just finding a way to make money online. But, and then that's why I didn't stick with them because there wasn't that passion there. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, and so now you have a podcast that's been around 
for three years, as you said, you have great episodes. I've been listening to several of them and then you, you have your book and then you also now help other people start podcasts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I have my own podcast production agency now, which, so it's kind of funny because I started the podcast in 2019. I didn't even start listening to podcasts until maybe a year or something before that, mm -hmm. because I'm more of a music listener in general. So like when I'm driving, if there's not a song, like <laughs> if it goes to a commercial or the DJ, I switch. So when people would say, oh, you should check out this podcast or that podcast or whatever, I'd be like, I don't like people talking on radio. So I don't think I would <laughs> like a podcast. But then there were a few that I had heard about that like really interested me. So I tried them out and then I got hooked. Now I'm subscribed to like 30 different shows. Um, and so, yeah, what I love about podcasting is that, I mean, some of them have ads in them, but for mm -hmm. the most part they don't, but, or they're not as long, but at least all the content is niche down and, mm -hmm. you know, to whatever topic that you're interested in versus a DJ talking about anything and everything. And so, um, I guess, where was I going with it? Well, so I just started listening to podcasts not long before I started my own. And then once I started my own, then I really got into it and I was producing my own show. I figured why not get paid to do it for other people? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I started doing that and it's actually, it's like post-production, but also, like marketing, coaching, monetization, like stuff like that as well. Not just the editing part of it, but yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think that's something that's important for people to think about for, and for any online business, right. Cause podcast is essentially an online business. Um, mm -hmm. be, there are resources out there, but you have to figure out which ones are the right ones for you and the right fit for you. And you have to figure out, it's like any product. It's not just you release it to the world and you hope that somebody listens to it or you, you release it and think, okay, everybody's going to hear it now. Um, I mean, my partner, he is um, in the film business and he's an editor and he's done different projects. And he's like, oh, I didn't really realize how important marketing and PR is to start from the beginning of a project until we started dating because, you know, he, as a creative, he was just thinking, oh, I'm just going to create this product and it's going to go out there and it'll be great. But no, you have to have all of those elements that you said, who you're marketing it to, who's your audience, how are you marketing it, you know, making sure you have the right music or the right fit and the right flow for each individual podcast and podcaster and their personality mm -hmm. and package that together. So what are some of the things that you would share with somebody if they were wanting to start a podcast? as far as like how to get started, just the basics or kind of, I guess, what to think about as far as just, I guess it's a part A and a part B, right? Oh. Like start, what do you, you know, how do you pick a topic? Um, how do you decide what you're going to, to speak about? Are you going to interview people? Are you going to, mm -hmm. you know, do, uh, are you just going to talk the whole time? I mean, cause I know there's so many different kinds of podcasts. Right. It can get overwhelming to figure out. Yeah. That. And then how do you then transition to figuring out, okay, how do I do this thing besides mm. going to your website? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, definitely find a topic and ne and niche down as much as you can, because I know there are some people out there like Joe Rogan, for example, who have a podcast about everything, you know, but that for the most part, that doesn't work for the average person or business owner. So definitely niche down. Like, for example, my podcast is a business podcast or an entrepreneurship podcast, but it's niche down even more in that it's like frugal entrepreneurship. Um, and then as far as like, a title for your podcast. I definitely like, okay. So I wouldn't normally suggest something cute, you know, whereas <laughs> mine is kind of cute, I guess, but it's very obvious what it's about. Like yeah. frugalpreneur, that's pretty obvious, but I do have a kind of a tagline under it just in case um, called building a business on a bootstrap budget. And so it's pretty clear what it's about, but also I don't recommend someone 
like having their name in the title. I mean, you could say mm-hmm. what the title is with so and so, like mine's Frugalpreneur with Sarah St. John. But if you were to, like, if I were to have the Sarah St. John show, while well, that kind of sounds cool because of the alliteration, mm-hmm. um, it's like that's not going to really go anywhere because no one knows who that is. Like, yeah. if you're Oprah, yeah, you can have <laughs> Oprah, the Oprah show or whatever. But for the average person, I wouldn't recommend like your title being your name. And then, yeah, definitely cover art that really pops and is simple, but like colorful. And then um, as far as what kind of format, I mean, I guess it depends on what your goal is with the podcast, Um, because you could do a solo podcast where it's just you talking and usually those episodes would be shorter Mm. you could do interview style which is the most common I think uh and the thing that's nice about interview style is you're connecting with people networking uh you know a, a lot of people use a podcast at least if they're using it for business they're using it as a way to get to know people and get clients and and things like that or mm you know, that person might know somebody and they might, you know, just kind of the networking. Um, So interview podcasts are really good for that. Uh, But there are so many out there. So I personally recommend doing a little bit of both doing the interview and solo episodes. I'm trying to do more of that. I haven't done a whole lot of solo episodes lately, but I'm trying to kind of mix it up more. And And then there's also like a panel or, well, actually, no, the next one would be like co-hosting where it's like two hosts Mm -hmm. or a panel where it's like three or more, or maybe they invite a guest on and there's like two hosts or something like that. So there's different, all kinds of different ways to, (laughs) to do it. And then, yeah, to get started, I mean, I recommend, so the mic that I have is called an ATR 2100. It was under a hundred bucks. It was like 60 or 80 or something. So I recommend, I mean, you could start out with like Apple earbuds or whatever. Mm. um, If you have like no budget whatsoever, but if you have a hundred dollar budget, you could easily get a mic. There's also the Samsung Q2U, which is about the same price. And then, and they're USB mics. So they plug right into the computer. And, and then really the only other expense at first would be the hosting. Uh, You can get free hosting through like anchor, uh, but I recommend captivate. That's what I use. It's Mm -hmm. like 19 a month. Most are five to 20 a month, most hosting companies. So those are kind of a few things. Like if you're just starting out what to think about, Yeah. Well, and um, for your podcast, did it evolve over time? Because I know when I started this one, I was like, I'm going to ask five questions. I'm going to keep it really short. I'm only going to interview like other PR people or other marketing people. And then I was like, this doesn't really feel like what I want to do. So then I started expanding it and, you know, really, I want to make sure it adds value. So Mm. people are still talking about ways to do marketing for your business. um, Mm -hmm. But it, expand into like lead gen or making sure your Mm. LinkedIn profile is good, or maybe you should have a podcast to help (laughs) promote your business. Right. Right. So, so it really, it evolved over time and I've, and I started being more regular with it and I'm still a newbie compared to you. Um, I've done other stuff. Like I had a radio um, and Facebook show Mm. in Houston a few years ago, we were what you would call panel style, which would sometimes get like if people act, you know, we'd, people would accidentally talk over each other, asking questions to the guests. And it got a little mm-hmm. like, you know, angsty <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but um, when you started, did you know like exactly what your podcast was going to be and kind of the format and how you want it to flow? Yeah. So um, for, well, first of all, are you in Houston? Are you still in Houston? I am not in Houston. I oh. have many people there. I'm now in California. Oh, okay. I was going to say I'm in Dallas, so oh. not too far, but <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> um. So when I started my podcast with the intention of it just being another promotional method with the book, Mm -hmm. what I did was I interviewed 
like the CEOs or someone within the company of like the different software programs that I use that were free. And so that was kind of how it started. But then once I kept going with it, I interviewed different people that I, different entrepreneurs that I admired and followed that were within certain niches like affiliate marketing or podcasting or self-publishing or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of, so it's like every year it's, there's kind of a slight pivot, hmm. uh, not intentional. It just kind of happens. Hmm. Um, well, I mean, at a certain point I make that decision, but it's, it's not like I set out from the get go. Yeah. Like you're one, I'm going to do this. You're two, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Right. And so <laughs> then, then the next year I did interviewing people who started a business with under a thousand dollars and then bootstrapped it to at least a million, not per year, but like total, uh, without any outside capital or loans, credit, uh, any of that kind of stuff, but like bootstrapped it. And I think so far, those have been the most successful episodes. Those um, people really like listening to those. Oh, yeah. I like some people even starting with no money or under a hundred dollars and then bootstrapping up to multiple millions. But um, so I did some episodes like that. And then let's see, I'm wanting to do well, I've interviewed one person so far that was on Shark Tank and got a deal. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm wanting to interview more of those because I just think that's interesting. And then um, oh, what else? I I'm wanting to do like a kidpreneur series. Oh, fun. So it's kind of like I, I have the general podcast, but then I like to do like these little series yeah. like you know, I want to do a Shark Tank series, which I only have one episode of that so far. So it's not really a series, I guess, but, and then I'd like to do a kidpreneur one. And then of course I did the bootstrap one and then, yeah. So it kind of like the type of people I interview is a little different from. Yeah. It evolves, but that also helps your audience, um, to learn new things as well. Mm-hmm. So especially I think as a small business or an entrepreneur, a lot of times you don't have, you can't get outside funding. You don't have credit built up in your company. You can't get loans. You can't get outside funding. So knowing those things from, from that series that you did is really important. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it speaks exactly to who you are, the frugalpreneur and how you can successfully bootstrap and the things that you need to look out for. I and mean, there are so many things when I was doing my business when I started getting more success, you know, then I would make wild decisions like I'm going to provide benefits or I'm going to make everybody employees, even though they live in five different states. <laughs> not really like I didn't have that person next to me that was like, you know, that's probably not what you should do right now. Let's do some more projections. Let's think about this, um, you know, and let's like maybe pivot that a little bit, put more investment in here in the business and then get there down the road. But I was like, so excited. And I just wanted to give like everything I could out of the gate. And, mm -hmm. and I think sometimes it's good to hear other people's stories and be able to take a step back. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, everyone, I guess, has their own approach and their own, like maybe if someone has a whole bunch of savings built up, or yeah. maybe they have a spouse that can fully provide or, you mm -hmm. know, something like that then maybe they can take some more risks and spend some more money here or there or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, if someone at least is doing an online business, I just feel like it can be done so affordably because there's hardly any overhead as far as like, you don't have a building or rent or utilities and um, all of that stuff. And so that's just what I found. Like the profit margins are much higher with an yeah. online business and very little overhead. <laughs> yeah. And you have, um, you've also done online courses. So I'm working on one right now. It's okay. called podcast profit pro it's, Ooh. it's on pre-sale right now, but it's basically, it's a podcasting course, but it's not covering the intro basics. Like I do have a book called podcast preneur, which covers like basics, like podcasting one oh one, basically. Um, but the course is going to be more about like 
if you already have a podcast, how to monetize it, how to get mm. the right guests, uh, how to get bigger guests, how to get on other shows, bigger shows, um, different like marketing techniques and like ads, like within the podcast players and all like, so very, a lot more detailed. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I would say like an intermediate probably level there. Oh, cool. And so that's in pre-sale. When is it going to be like fully launched? Yeah. So I'm still working on it. So that's why uh, I'm thinking the plan is it should be done by August. So this is May. I don't know when this episode goes live, but we're in May. And so the plan is August. Um, and I'm, I'm actually also working on a book that mm. will kind of, I was going to say coincide with the course, but it's not going to be nearly as, because the course obviously is going to have screen shares and all kinds of stuff in like different PDFs and whatnot. So it's going to be more in depth, but there's going to be some overlap of information. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to put both of those out around the same time and hopefully right before podcast movement, which Ooh. is a podcasting conference in Dallas this year where I live uh, in August. And so, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Well, this episode will be coming out in June. Okay. So it's a really great little promo spot. So talk it up, talk yourself off as oh, much yeah. as you want. <laughs> yeah. So pod podcastprofitpro.com is the website. <laughs> nice. I love that. You know, I love working with women or hearing women's stories, particularly who have bootstrapped their entrepreneurship. Um, I'm there. I, you know, I'm a single mom. I've been like at the highest high, the lowest low and everywhere in between. Um, and so it's really great to get these tips. And I am for one going to go back and listen to all those other episodes because I've been listening to some of your more recent ones, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I think there's always something new to learn. Um, and so speaking of when somebody decides to work with you, what are some of the things they know they can, um, like, do you have an intake form? Do you work with everybody? Do you, are you, you know, I know some people are like, no, I'm, I'm going to work with certain people like or certain niches because other ones might not fit. Mm. Yeah. So I just work primarily with business owners. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm not niche down as far as like certain types of businesses, but businesses in general versus like an entertainment podcast. Cause that's, mm -hmm. that's harder to to get someone to monetize first of all. And secondly, I mean, those tend to not probably always stick around and <laughs> like, plus they don't usually have the budget because it's like, if it's an entertainment podcast and they're doing it kind of for fun and they're, and they're not monetizing it, it's like, how can they justify yeah. paying someone else to produce and all that stuff. And so, yeah, definitely business owners who have a business who, well, there's kind of two tracks there's they already have a business and they want a podcast either they already have a podcast or they're thinking about starting a podcast to help get more exposure mm -hmm. and to promote their business and like I said earlier where they could position it in such a way where their ideal client could be the guests on the podcast type thing nice. and then the other would be someone who doesn't have a business yet but they want to use the podcast as kind of like the launch pad I guess to start the business uh or, or have a business around that that's a little more difficult than you know <laughs> but yeah so um and then as far as like, so I have the production side of it where it's like all the post-production, the editing and the show notes and transcriptions and the, the graphics and social media and all that stuff. Because I think one problem is so many people start a podcast, but they only get about seven to 10 episodes in, uh, and for the most like 90% or something of podcasts. Oh, wow. Yeah, they pod fade is the term after seven to 10 episodes because, and I think one of the big reasons for that is because they go in not really realizing the, all the post-production and the time <laughs> it takes. Cause yeah. 
I, I mean, for me, it takes like, you know, three to four hours post-production per like hour of rec- recording. And so, so there's that side of it. And then the marketing side of it, uh, the monetization side, I have like, it's like four M's. I just, um, I'm still updating my website to reflect this, but Hmm. so it's like the management side is the production and then there's marketing, monetization and matching, which would be like the guest to host, like matching those up to the right shows and the right guests and stuff. Hmm. So it's kind of all in one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you do it all. I, um, applaud you because I can't, I, I, would be lost if I didn't have mm. people helping me with some of those things. Cause I yeah. don't create graphics. I don't know how to use the editing software. Um, luckily, I, like I said, I have an editor boyfriend, so he's, <laughs> he just slides it in for me. Um, <laughs> but what are some of the things, and I don't want you to give away all your secrets because I know people work with you and pay you for this, but what are some easy tips and tricks that you would give to somebody So, okay, they've started their podcast, they got the equipment, they started doing some recording, they're now trying to figure out how to market and monetize it. Mm. So what what are some things that you have seen like really fail um, and work, and then on the other side, work really well for those? And like, because I imagine, you know, finding the right advertisers or sponsors or what have you is not always easy, depending on what your topic is or how many downloads you have. Or does that stuff even matter? Yeah. So on the monetization side, one big fail is merch, like to have merch for your show. Oh, okay. <laughs> that that didn't work at all, at least for me. Uh, I think that rarely works, but you know, like t-shirts and yeah. whatever else of your hats, t-shirts, yeah. Yeah, swag. <laughs> Unless it's like a really huge show that everyone knows about, you know, um, as far as, okay. So as far as sponsorships, like you'd mentioned, so I think the average, so most places they operate on a CPM, which is like cost per mille, which is a thousand. I mean, you're maybe you'd have to have about 50,000 downloads per month or per episode or per month um, for that to really make sense to go that route. So like Joe Rogan, he's getting mil- millions of downloads. So that makes sense because it's only like, Oh, what was the last I checked? Oh, I think it was like 15 bucks. 15 to 40 is the range per thousand downloads. And so what I've actually done is instead of going that route, like I've approached companies directly and said, and and just put out a price and said like what it includes, like I'm going to put this ad in the episode and it's going to stay there. It's not going to be replaced. I'll also do like an email blast with the episode with like saying sponsored by so-and-so and And then like the show notes and all this stuff. Uh, and I've actually gotten a lot more sponsorships that way. Oh, cool. Um, and I was doing that kind of like testing it out, but that's still, and unless you're getting millions of downloads, that's still not, I mean, it'll pay for your expenses and stuff like that but it's not going to pay your mortgage typically or anything like that (laughs) um so and that's another reason I like to work with businesses because they always have some sort of product or service Mm -hmm. on the back end and so what I recommend if you have a product or service is to actually create your own ads or Mm. talk about your own products and services because you're going to end up making a lot more money talking about that um you know as a podcast listener getting to know like and trust you over the course of however many episodes and then maybe they need your product or service at some point you're probably going to make a lot more doing that than I mean you can do both Mm -hmm. I've kind of done a variety just kind of testing things out but 
uh, I definitely recommend that first and foremost. And then also affiliate marketing where that works pretty well. Like say you have someone on your show who maybe they have a software program or they have a book or something like that. You could link to it in the show notes or uh, reference it and like create a pretty link. I don't know if you're familiar with that or like a oh. bitly. Oh yeah. Like a, a URL shortener, mm-hmm. like get an affiliate link from them, assuming they have an affiliate or referral program, which most people do. Um, and then, yeah. So that if someone buys something from them because of your episode, because of your show, then you'll get a commission basically. Hmm. And then like with authors, Amazon has an affiliate program. You could link to their book through Amazon with your oh. link. It's only like two to 3% or some two to 5%. It's not much, <laughs> but the nice thing about Amazon affiliate program is if say someone clicks the link of the book in your show notes, for example, mm-hmm. even if they don't buy that book, but say they buy a flat screen TV within 24 hours, as long as they haven't cleared their cookies, you'll get commission on that. Oh, wow. That's good. Yeah. To know. So that's really the only reason I recommend Amazon affiliate because the percentage you're getting really isn't that much, but like if they end up buying a whole bunch of stuff, it can add up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it can add up. So, um, so yeah, uh, I would say on the monetization side, that's, I would say talking about your own products and services, affiliate marketing, where it makes sense, like an author comes on, um, merch, not so much. <laughs> and then, um, sponsorships, I would say, well, plus also if you do a sponsorship, make sure it's with a company that makes sense to your audience. Like you, I don't know. There's a bunch of companies out there that put ads on all kinds of podcasts and it just doesn't (laughs) make sense. sense. Yeah. So it needs to make sense. Um, Otherwise people are just going to get annoyed. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. And then as far as marketing goes, So podcast ads, like ads within a podcast player, which not all players can do them. um, That works really well Hmm. as far as getting more listeners and um, followers and stuff. It can be expensive depending on which app you do it on. Um, I think... It it could range anywhere from like 99 bucks on the low end Hmm. to like 2000. So yeah, yeah. it really depends on how big your budget is and what your goals are. Right. And I I like the fact that when you're talking about monetizing your podcast, I think your main point was it's really a marketing tool for you. Right. Exactly. First and foremost. So don't look at it necessarily as something you're going to make money off of it. Look at some as something that's going to help you market your product, your service, your business. Yeah, exactly. It's like a lot of people, they want to monetize directly Mm -hmm. and you can with sponsorships and things like that, but you're going to make a lot more money with it being more of a marketing tool, kind of like the front end of your sales (laughs) funnel. Like that's where people find out about you and whatnot. So monetizing more on the back end is what I recommend. Yeah. Nice. What continues to inspire and motivate you about helping other podcasters start their journey? Oh, I mean, I just, I just love the space. I feel like it's continuing to grow. And I mean, there's tons of money being thrown at it. We know with like Joe Rogan, for example, I keep bringing him up just because he's like, (laughs) well, just, I don't, yeah, like, (laughs) I don't even listen to a show. I don't think I've ever listened to one, but it's just that that's the most popular or well-known podcaster, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I mean, Spotify paid him, I think one or 200 million. Yeah. Crazy. And then Spotify bought up a bunch of apps like anchor actually, Mm -hmm. and some others, and then just different. And and, Oh, Amazon has podcasts now. Mm and uh google so like 
even if someone is searching in a Google, um, like a Google search, they're searching something, a podcast episode could come up as a result. So um, I just love the, the, the direction is going that it's becoming more mainstream. Cause I mean, even when I first started listening to podcasts, you know, four or five years ago, I mean, I don't know that I knew a whole lot of people listening to podcasts. I feel like it's really grown really quick. Yeah. Like, cause it's been around since 2000 and 2004, I believe. Hmm. And between 2004 and 2019, so 15 years, yeah. there was only 800,000 podcasts, but then between 2019 and 2020, it doubled. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, to like 1.6. And now I think it's over two or 3 million, but of course, some of those don't last very long, mm. but still it's like, and so, uh, but I love the fact that it's almost kind of like a community. I feel like, I, I f- like within the podcasting community, I f- it just feels like everyone's tight knit. Like even when it's two companies that are like the same type of company, they don't, it doesn't feel like competition. They like encourage each other and um, and I just, I don't know. I love the networking aspect of it and the connections and making friends. I'm actually going to a podcast conference this coming weekend. It's going to be the first one I've ever gone to. Oh, nice. Uh, it's in Austin. So only like a three hour drive and like half of the speakers I already know only by online though, mm-hmm. like they've been on my show, I've been on their show or whatever. And so it'll be nice to finally meet them in person. But yeah, I think plus just the exposure that podcasting gives, especially a business owner and the reach and it's almost like a, I don't know if I want to say this, but almost like a cult like thing. It's like, (laughs) it's almost like some of my favorite podcasts are about cults. (laughs) Oh, really? Yeah. (laughs) Or like people who left cults. (laughs) Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, most of the podcasts I listen to are entrepreneurial, but some of ones like you're talking about or like the true crime ones, they interest me, but I just don't have, uh, I don't have time or room for them on my, like, I literally don't have room for them on my phone. Like oh my, my space <laughs> is running out. <laughs> yeah. Well, to your point, like I usually like love listening to music in the car, mm-hmm. but now I commute um, a few days a week and the out commute is you know, an hour, sometimes longer, depending on traffic and construction. So Mm. I have to have those podcasts queued up. Yeah. Um, And that's been really awesome. And listening to different business podcasts or manifestation podcasts or like this one only because of, um, again, like somebody else was like, oh, I'm doing a project on this cult. Here's Mm. a podcast episode that just came out on it. And then I got hooked on like, oh, let me dive into that world a little bit. So I think it's interesting to see like what we figure out that we want to listen to. Right. And you know how they always say there's an app for that. Well, (laughs) I feel like there's a podcast podcast. for that. Yeah. Yeah. You need to trademark that. um. (laughs) Oh, I should. Yeah, you totally should. There's a podcast for that. (laughs) Oh, Okay. Now I got ideas. Now I'm yeah. having shiny object syndrome because now I have ideas of like what that could be, but well, I think it goes really well with your brand and what you're doing and how you're helping people, you know, get to the next level and think about like what they would want to do for their podcast. Huh? Yeah. You just gave me an idea for a podcast. I can oh. actually call it. There's a podcast for that. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll have to stay in touch about that. I want to see where this goes. I know. We'll bring you back on because one of the things I was thinking about doing is starting to bring brands on who want to talk through their brand strategy and do some of that as well. So it's not just talking to experts and getting some of their case studies, right? But then turning it on the head a little bit. So, Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, when you were talking about how you've kind of done these different series, it's like, oh yeah, that's something I want to do too. So Yeah. I love Yeah. And the nice thing about podcasts is you can technically do whatever you want. So, (laughs) I mean, so yeah, if you want to, even if you want to pivot, like some people end up changing the name of their podcast, like they realize they've had so many episodes about a particular topic that, or they're more interested, they're kind of either their business is pivoting or their Mm -hmm. interest or whatever. 
and then they end up like changing, but they don't. Well, I don't know if we want to get off on that, but I was just going to say you shouldn't start. You should keep the same RSS feed, which is the feed that mm. so that you keep your followers and listeners and stuff. Um, but I've thought about doing that a couple of times, like more into podcasting. Mm-hmm. But I really like the whole frugalpreneur and I love talking to yeah, you got to keep it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fan. You got to. keep. Yeah, I think there's a lot to be learned there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I love the fact that I can talk to all kinds of business owners, not yeah. just like, not just podcasters, which right. is what it would be <laughs> if it was just a podcast. <laughs> oh, awesome. So um, I know you have a couple of websites and ways for people to find you. What is your most highly recommended? Uh, well, so I give away all three of my books, the PDF version for free, oh, wow. if anyone's interested. And that's at the sarahstjohn.com forward slash free. Okay. Um, that's Sarah with an H and then S T J O H N the Sarah St. John.com. Cause Sarah St. John was already taken. So I had to, oh. <laughs> well, you are the official right? yeah. Sarah St. John. So, <laughs> and then, yeah, if someone's interested in like, say they already have a podcast or they're thinking about starting a podcast, um, the podcast agency that I have is pod seam, P O D S E A M.com nice. that, that course I was talking about podcastprofitpro.com. And then if someone wants to listen to the podcast, they can just go to any podcast app and type in frugalpreneur and it should pop up. Awesome. And, um, I'll share these in the show notes so that everybody has access to the resources and can find you easily. Um, is there anything else that you'd want to share with our audience today? Oh, well, I mean, I guess a couple of just basic tips that I would give in general when it comes to business is the, well, in in terms of the shiny object syndrome, since we already kind of talked about that is to kind of recognize when it's happening. And I think it's okay to have that in the beginning when you're trying to figure out what you're wanting to do. But like once you're zoned in on something that's actually working and then you find yourself like getting distracted, I just recognize it. And, you know, because if you imagine like a pie or a pizza or something, if you're focusing a hundred percent of your time, energy, money, even on one thing, mm-hmm. you have a hundred percent, but if you're spinning if you have like 10 slices and doing 10 different things then you can only dedicate 10 percent to each thing Mm. so that's just something I've had to learn over the years and then I would also say the other thing to kind of watch out for is that we spend so much time learning which is good we we need to learn with podcasts and courses Mm. and books and all this stuff but if you don't implement what you're learning then it's pointless so you gotta implement what you're learning um and also because if you're learning all this stuff when the time comes to actually need to implement it you're not probably not even going to remember so just learn what you need to learn for whatever stage you're in and then implement it nice 100 percent agree with that um i have yeah there are so many projects that i'm like a little bit on the way. And I'm like, I just need to sit down and do it. Mm, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, awesome. Sarah, thank you so much for sharing a lot of knowledge on podcasts and entrepreneurship today with our audience. Um, and I am going to go download some free resources myself right after this. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't wait to see your next book and see what you do next. So thanks to our audience for coming back for another week of Your Brand Amplified. I'm your host, Annika Jackson, and I'll be back again next week. Want more? Check out AmplifyWithAnnika.com or follow me on socials at AmplifyWithAnnika. Editing long podcasts like this or webinars for social is time-consuming. Simplified AI Clips uses AI to turn your lengthy videos into short, viral clips. Create shareable content from your recordings in a few minutes. Built for small businesses and marketers looking to save time and boost engagement, visit simplified.com and use Annika30 to save 30% today.